This episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast is brought to you by Jetley's award-winning children's book, The Great Maritini. A very long, long time ago, there was a boy named Sam who liked to do his magic tricks, and he was quite the ham. He was called the Great Maritini, the best magician of his age, but his greatest feat took place. trick Sam tried to do would somehow come out wrong, but Sam just kept on going, and that's what made him strong. He was called the Great Maritini, the best magician of his age, but his greatest feat took place far away from any stage. One day as he traveled, he stranger in need and this was not a trick oh no but a magical good deed he was called the great maritini the best magician of his age but his greatest feat took place far away from any stage he was called the great maritini the best magician of his age but his greatest feat took place far away from any stage to get your autograph copy of the giant bilingual edition of the Great Maritini, please visit greatmaritini.com. Reading with your kids. Hey, 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 so great to see you. Come on in. Hi, my name is Jed Lee and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast and iTunes number one kids and family podcast. Thank you so much for helping us reach that lofty position. And we did it through your help by subscribing to the show, by sharing our posts, and by letting your friends know all about the podcast. Thank you so very much. And if you haven't subscribed yet, this is a great time to do it. Hey, our guest today is Amber Perth. She is the author of Wellspring Crow, part of the Navigator series. Chapter one is about Daniel Mason Jones. Be confident. Many years ago, a little boy named Daniel grew up in a loving and accepting family in a small town in South Carolina. Like many people in small towns, he lived a simple childhood, but Daniel's community was very different than most. His community was strict and had strong beliefs that didn't allow for many things that seemed common to others. For example, women could not cut their hair or wear pants, and children were never allowed to watch TV. Yes, you read that correctly. They never watched TV. Although for most people, this would seem like an impossible way of life. Daniel really didn't think he missed out. Now that he's older, he thinks that this allowed for him to develop an extra creative mind that would eventually serve him quite well. Throughout Daniel's childhood, quite a few challenges tested his ability to face difficulty head on. When he was younger, he was bullied because people thought he was different. But aren't we all different? He remembers thinking that his friends had all sorts of talents in sports and in schoolwork, but he didn't see the talents that he had. He felt like he was a misfit. In middle school, Daniel would not eat lunch in the classroom because he didn't want to get teased. Instead of spending money on lunch, he saved up his money to purchase flowers that he planted at a retirement home. Daniel remembers the great feeling of joy and pride, knowing that although he was feeling kind of crummy, he was able to make a great impact on the residents of the retirement home. Our think big question after this segment says, think big. Even as a student, you can bring joy to those around you, like David did with the residents of the retirement home. What are some ways you can do something that you love that also has a positive impact on those around you? Our conversation with Amber is going to begin in just a moment. But before it does, I I wanted to remind you, I'm making a special offer to all of my friends who listen to the Reading With Your Kids podcast. You've heard me talk about my educational magic show, the fact that I visit schools all throughout the eastern United States uh, using magic to inspire kids to be kind, caring, and respectful and, and, and to develop a love of books. Well, I would love to bring that message to your kids. Wherever you are in the world, I'd love to come and visit your classroom through the magic of Skype, and it's free. 
That's right. It is free. A free Skype visit to your classroom anywhere in the world. Check it all out. You can find out some more information at my website, readingwithyourkids.com. Click on the free Skype visits button at the top of the page. Joining us right now from one of my favorite places in the world, Atlanta in Georgia. Great, great city. She's the author of a, a, a fantastic series. I really love the idea for the series. It's called the Navigator Series. Please welcome to the show, Amber Pert. Amber, how are you? Hi, good. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited. Amber and I were speaking a little bit before the interview, and I was telling her how, uh, you know, the Navigator Series is, is about entrepreneurs, and it's talking to kids about businesses, and we're going to get more to that but I was just telling um, Amber how I, I really kind of many years ago made a dramatic kind of switch in the way I looked at the world. And, and you know, when I was younger and probably naive, a lot of my friends said I was naive, <laughs> you know, I thought, oh, you know, we can just kind of wish the world to be a better place and just be nicer to each other. And I do firmly believe we should be nicer and kinder and charitable. Uh, but I always thought of business as being a bad thing and business as being greedy. And now I kind of understand that, you know, business is, you know, businesses for the most part are, are run by good, honest, hardworking people who are trying to give mm -hmm. other people opportunities. Uh -huh. yeah. Correct. Correct. Love that. So, so tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about the Navigator series. Sure. The Navigator series um, features a whole variety of professionals in all different industries who have experienced the highs, the lows, the accomplishments, the challenges of building a business, of serving customers, of fulfilling the, um, the path of their values that they feel are important in their life. And these stories um, a lot of times they're hard for kids to understand. So we kind of took their stories and brought it down to a way that kids will understand. We definitely wanted to include some business topics and big, big ideas. So um, with our books, we've encouraged it to be read along with an adult. So that a big important idea for us is conversations that come from these books. Ah, and I love that. I, I, cause I, I believe books are reading with our kids. That's, just the beginning, mm -hmm. reading with our mm -hmm. kids. It's a start of a lifelong conversation about mm -hmm. everything. Everything. Yes, yes. Could not agree more. Yeah. So what what was it that inspired you? Because, you know, we, we've had a lot of authors on and, you know, authors are talking about counting and writing stories about animals and, and like mm -hmm. I said, being kind. And everybody seems mm -hmm. to be writing a book about uh, not being a bully. And those things are mm -hmm. really, really important. important. Uh, sure. But I think you're the first author we've had on talking about businesses and, mm -hmm. and uh, getting get kids to th start thinking entrepreneurially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to say my inspiration was my son, who always has wanted to be the boss. And I use that in quotations because that's all that he wanted to be. And he did not quite understand that you don't just get to leave your parents and suddenly you're the boss. Like there's quite a long journey that gets somebody to become a leader. And those stories look differently. And I think it's a great um, lesson to share with kids. And especially, you know, it was designed to show my son, like, you know, they have awesome jobs and they are the boss. But to get there, they had to study in school. They had to make hard choices. They had to follow through on things that are important to them. So um, there's there's so many lessons that are tied um, within these stories. Mm -hmm. And one thing too, a lot of kids who do aspire to be the boss, I I wasn't one of them, but but one of the <laughs> things uh, the kids don't understand is that um, uh, when when you're the boss, that usually means you work the hardest. <laughs> Uh huh. Uh huh. Yes. And that's definitely not something that I think is, you know, on the top of the minds of kids. You know, in our stories, we talk about with our um, bakery owner who has to show up at two thirty in the morning if, you know, the employee doesn't. So mm -hmm. having to make those tough calls of, you know, this is your business you're wanting to run and lead. And it's a it's a hard job. There's mm -hmm. lots of hard choices. But the goal is that you're getting to really impact your community, your family, and, you know, hopefully the greater audience for what um, is important to you. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and that's such a different mindset. I I kind of grew up in a family and a beautiful family, but we had, mm-hmm. you know, it, the, the the kind of mindset that 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 I heard about from my family and my neighbors and everything was, oh well, you know, you go out and you get a job with mm-hmm. the utility or with the mm-hmm. state or with the city, and then you work that job forever. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then, and mm-hmm. if you then if you work long enough, thirty four years, then you can retire and right. and have a pension. Mm-hmm. Most of those jobs don't exist anymore. Am I right about mm-hmm. that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you're really you're really right. But you also bring up a good point of that um, with our series. You know, I am very aware that not all kids are designed to go mm-hmm. into those leadership boss owning their own small business role. Um, I have two kids that see the world very differently. Mm-hmm. And um, this one particular son wants to be the boss. The other one, I hope he graduates high school. So I'm going, I'm working with two different, you know, thought processes, but I hope these stories can still inspire them to think big, think big about how you're treating people. Think big about your commitments of what you say. Think big about, um, you know, other people and how they view world, how they view the world. So there's lots of things that kind of go beyond just being a boss that I think are important conversations that we have with our kids. That's interesting. Uh, now, now some people out there, and certainly when I was in my kind of anti-business mindset, uh-huh. uh, you know, I had this idea that business was just about making the most money as possible, even if you had to mm-hmm. screw people over, screw the environment. Right. And and you're talking about, by by learning about businesses, where actually we can start talking to our kids about how we treat others. Right, right, right. I love that. I love that. And there's a big point of um, all of our stories that talk about service and how that looks to give back to others, whether it's giving back to a charity or creating your own charity. You know, there's lots of different ways to making sure that you are being a um, steward of what's been give, given to you. And that's an interesting word, being a steward. Mm-hmm. How would you how would you suggest parents talk to kids about mm-hmm. that word and, and about that mm-hmm. that kind of notion? You know, we actually have that as a glossary word in our first book because it is a big word, but I think it's a great word to kind of start the conversation. You know, being a steward of your what you've been given. Um, if kids have extra toys and they're realizing that they don't need them, then the opportunity to share with kids and donate to other kids that need them. Um, if they're able to earn extra money and donate their resources to, um, to their church tithing or to a donation bucket, or even, you know, my kids are starting to see now that there's, uh, certain areas of our town where there's homeless people. And if we have extra food as we're going to the grocery store, you know, providing those resources that are abundant to us, but we have the ability to somehow, in some way it looks different for everyone is to giving back somehow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I I love that. And I, especially you mentioned homeless. My, my wife and I, Mm -hmm. our our family, we should, it is our family. Uh, Mm -hmm. We've been leading our, our church ministry to the homeless and we just had our annual cook cookout for the guest of a, a shelter here in Boston. And it's uh, a beautiful thing. And now my kids are older. They're, they're 22 and 25, but they've been part of this ministry as they've been growing up. And, and mm-hmm. now it's a part, you know, I, I looked around and, um, there were more people, uh, serving at, at this cookout the other day from our family, from our extended family. And, and my kids and their friends than, than we had from the church. You know, <laughs> you know, this, this startup yeah. is just a church thing. And now all of a sudden it's, it's become quite our family thing. Mm-hmm. I love that. That's yeah. awesome. What a great way to kind of talk to our kids about giving back and about sharing mm-hmm. with others. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. And, um, you know, along the same lines of giving back is also a big idea is, um, talking about who you're connected to and talking about, leaders that have given to you and taught you, whether it's a teacher, a coach, or a parent, and then also your responsibility is to do the same for others. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you have a skill of you can like read really well, or you can play basketball really well, like using that skill to then help others around you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny. I, I, I think you'd appreciate this. One of the things I do in my educational magic shows is I 
uh, we'll go around and give out little beads to kids. And I ask them as they're, as they're holding on to the bead, we're going to do something magical with it. But as you're holding on to it, I want you to think about something that you're thankful for. Aww. And mm-hmm. not all the time, but enough times. And, and I just love it. Uh, kids, you know, they'll say, well, I'm thankful for my home or my parents mm-hmm. or this person helped me. But mm-hmm. a lot of times kids will say, I'm thankful that I can help so and so. And I, I hear that from little yeah. kids uh-huh. too. And it's like, whoa, you're mm-hmm. six and seven years old and you have grasped this. And mm-hmm. it's something that a lot of grown ups don't, don't appreciate. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, totally. Another idea is attitude of gratitude that we talk about mm-hmm. and seeing, you know, even through a challenge, there might be a great lesson learned. Uh, one company we interviewed had a son that was born blind and that spurred their business rather than seeing it as a, you know, just a downfall to their hopes and dreams, to their family. They were able to create a business out of this challenge and now they're benefiting other families. So seeing even though there's a negative situation, there's a way to look at it, to change your attitude and see a positive from it. Yeah. Well, this is really cool. Well, you, you have a, a, a great website with all sorts of resources. It's for your business. Tell us a, mm-hmm. a little bit about the website and what folks will find on it. Sure, sure. So we're, um, we're still a fresh company, you know, getting started. Um, we have the, the books and the series. We also, you know, big picture, we're wanting to really create products and content that um, inform and inspire young people. Um, one kind of fun way was created t-shirts that are just a uh, fun for the girls. The quote is inspired girls, inspire girls. So we really, you know, wholeheartedly believe that, um, there's ways that, you know, everyone can just touch and inspire other people. Mm-hmm. Um, we're also wanting to, um, just make sure that we, a big campaign that we're working on is to making sure that our content can get into classrooms as a, um, as a service line, essentially. So we're, we're taking nominations from friends, family, and those that visit the website to nominate classrooms that they would like this content to be um, available in their classrooms. We also have free supplemental activities on the website as well to go along with the books. Um, that will be there posted soon, but, um, but that is uh, the service line of the Give, Serve, Lead, Read is um, a current campaign we're working on. Cool. And, and that website is wellspringcrew.com, correct? Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Yeah. Now tell the, the Navigator series itself. Um, how many mm-hmm. books are available right now? Right now we have the first book and in August, the second book will be out. And then in the fall and winter will be the third and fourth. And um, each one figure, uh, features a variety of uh, industry leaders from their from their businesses. The fourth book that we're working on, we've completed the interviews and we're starting the writing process. I'm super excited about this one. This one is solely focused on women in STEM and um, really excited. I've got a great scientist, engineer, um, technology girls, women, females that are all very um, interested in sharing their stories to spur the next generation of women in STEM. Cool. So mm-hmm. very, very cool. Mm-hmm. And it, your your ultimate goal, do, do you see this um as creating books beyond the four books that you that you've talked about already most definitely i'm hoping that this will be an ongoing platform um for me personally and selfishly i have mm-hmm. loved these interviews with these leaders so much it has inspired me beyond anything that i thought would happen and um for me to i feel like i'm holding you know gold basically and i have to get this gold to the masses like these stories are amazing and i just I'm excited to see how these stories can inform and inspire our, our uh, next generation of leaders, whether they become a leader or they're just becoming an awesome human being who's ready to contribute to our world. Yeah, and and, and I think I think this information you're talking about. You you have two kids, and and one is mm-hmm. you know looking to be the leader, and and the other you're hoping will graduate from <laughs> from, from high school. And and th- yeah. there are different you know there are definitely right. people who are. Uh-huh leaders and feel comfortable Just, in that position. Uh-huh. There's some people who don't, but I think if kids, if people have an understanding about a business and see that not as just a place to get a paycheck, but right. to see themselves as part of a, a team, 
Uh-huh. Uh, you know, it's really easy when you're on the baseball team or a soccer team to understand we all have ways to contribute to the mm-hmm. team. And if we're understanding that being part of this business, whether it's a STEM business or mm-hmm. a service business, whatever it is, that mm-hmm. that that you're an integral part of the team, mm-hmm. no matter where mm-hmm. you are on that structure. And I th- mm-hmm. I think that having kids understand about business will help them get that understanding. And I think, well, um, I, I know that, that I feel much, much better being part of a team than just think, you know, just going in and punching a clock and getting a paycheck. Mm-hmm. Totally. Most definitely. I think that we need to celebrate the, um, you know, everyone is designed um, uniquely and specifically for a purpose and kind of spending time with our kids t- to appreciate those differences is an amazing thing to experience as a parent. You know, we're every, you know, there's, there's things that our kids are designed to do and there's things that they're not. And I think that if we can really appreciate and um, celebrate those, whatever they might be, that I think will spur them on to really feel confident in pursuing what they were designed for. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just letting them know that they're loved Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and that they have special gifts and talents. Beautiful. Totally. Now, I, I know folks can find you on um, wellspringcrew.com. Are mm-hmm. there other places where folks can connect with you on the Internet? I'm on Instagram. It's um, Amber underscore Wellspring Crew. And our Facebook page is Wellspring Crew as well. And um, those are our big social media spots right now. Now, the last thing I want to tell you, I know you created this to you know, kind of help your, your son. Did you ever envision that you'd be the... CEO, the driving force behind your own business? Not in my wildest dreams. No. <laughs> and <laughs> but it's super fun to jump on the ride. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, we've had a super fun time speaking to you. The, the name of the series is the Navigator Series. And uh, you can find Amber Pert, Pert on her website, wellspringcrew.com. And the books are also available on Amazon. Correct. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Well, check it out, the Navigator series. Our guest has been Amber Pert. Amber, thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you so much. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. We have a wonderful guest. Her name is Deborah Johnson. She will be here. We hope you will join us. If you are an author of a great children's book, we would love to help you tell the world all about that book. You know how difficult it is to get the word out about your book. Uh, Advertising is so expensive and, and then trying to find who it is you want to advertise to is very, very difficult. Well, you know, here in the Reading With Your Kids podcast, we have listeners who love children's books. We, we have other authors, we have teachers, we have parents. They all listen to the show because they want to find out about great children's books and our audience is growing and growing and growing. And like I said at the beginning of the show, Reading With Your Kids, our Reading With Your Kids podcast, it is a number one iTunes Kids and Family podcast. How would you like to be a guest on this podcast to give all of those listeners a, 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 a great conversation about your book? Get them excited about your book. Well, being a guest on the show, it's fun, it's easy, and it is absolutely free. That's right, free. A free opportunity to come in and, and tell thousands and thousands of people all about your great children's book. You can find out more by visiting my website, readingwithyourkids.com. Click on the contact button. Let us know about your book. We'll let you know the next step. Hey, want to thank Amber Pert for being here today. And of course, we want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. <laughs>